In this presentation, I want to follow up on our discussion of why structural equation models may not fit. So here I have an example of a one-factor model with four indicators, and I want to show you what that looks like in M+. So here I have uh, the model set up. I have the indicators y1 through y4 load on a factor f, and you can see I requested also residual output and mod indices, and I'll show you later what that is good for. So let's first of all take a look at the fit of this model in M+. We can see from the chi-square that this is a horrible fit. The model has only two degrees of freedom. We have a chi-square of almost 180. We also get a really bad RMSEA, CFI, TLI, and a very high SRMR as well. Now, what happened here? Why does this model not fit? This is a single factor model. And when we take a look at the correlation structure here, you can already see that there are some inhomogeneities in the correlation pattern. Y1 and Y2 are very highly correlated, almost 0.8. Y3 and Y4 are highly correlated, almost 0.7. And then the correlations between Y1 and Y2 and Y3 and Y4 are substantially lower. So this model underestimates the higher relationships between y3 and y4 and or between y1 and y2 because it has only a single factor. And so this means that we have a residual association here, for example, between y3 and y4 that is not accounted for by the model. Now, if you don't have a clue about that, how can you find out in M+, plus, you can take a look at the residual statistics. The residual statistics give you the residual covariances and correlations. And so here we can take a look at the model estimated correlations. And you can see that the model estimate, estimated or model implied correlation between Y3 and Y4 is substantially lower than what we found in our data. So the data had a correlation of almost 0.7. The model implied correlation is only 0.3. So the model underestimates this correlation. And as a result, in the residuals for correlations, you see that there's a big residual association, 0.365, that, that the model does not explain. And so this is, can be helpful to detect problems when you find that, oh, there's a very substantial residual association here that this model does not explain. Another way you can see this in M plus is by looking at model modification indices, which are reported here. And so here you can see that there's a very large modification index here for the association between Y1 and Y2, and also the same size or, um, about for the association between Y3 and Y4. So M plus suggests adding a residual association for between either the residuals for Y1 and Y2 or between the residuals for Y3 and Y4, and then your chi-square would drop by about 160. And so that means so say, there's a misfit here that's related to this residual association. Now, what could you do in that case? Maybe that's a sign that you really need two factors, two correlated factors. So it might be that Y1 and Y2 form a factor and Y3 and Y4 um, measure a factor and those factors are related, but they're not all measuring the same factor. And so then a two-factor model with correlated factors would solve the issue here. In this case, that's actually the model that generated the data and that model fits these data very well. Another possibility is that really the indicators measure a common construct but that there's a method effect that causes Y3 and Y4 to be more highly correlated. And so that um, then could be solved by including a method factor. Now, I will have a separate presentation on method factors at some point. But for now, so say, how could that happen? That could be the case, for example, because Y3 and Y4 might be negatively worded, whereas maybe Y1 and Y2 are positively worded, and that can cause a method effect. Even when you recode the indicators to all be positively correlated, there's an inhomogeneity in the correlation pattern that causes this higher correlation between Y1 and Y2 versus Y3 and Y4. And so adding a residual method factor is another way to address this that implies a very similar structure as a two-factor model with correlated factors. Now, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and it helps you to um, figure out your own misfit in your data. Stay tuned for more videos. If you like this, then feel free to sign up for this channel and I'll see you next time.